It's better than Black Hat. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Ferrari, the newest Michael Mann film. The first one he's done in eight years. The last one being Black Hat. Don't like to talk about that one. This film is focused on Enzo Ferrari, played by Adam Driver, at the height of some pretty interesting drama with the company, his marriage, his mistress, and the future that Ferrari would have from this race. The reason why I mentioned Black Hat is because I have a little bit of a sour taste from that film. Michael Mann, to, at one point, was my favorite film director, and then he kind of just disappeared. But if you go back to 1992, this man had hit after hit after hit. Last of the Mohicans, Heat, Insider, all these kind of eh, collateral, Miami Vice, kind of, eh. and then Public Enemies, and then he just disappeared. He didn't make another movie for six years, and that was Black Hat, and Black Hat sucked ass. When I really started reviewing film back in 2015, Black Hat was the second film I ever fully, truly reviewed that was new, and I was quite let down by it. This film, however, does have the Michael Mann feel, the touch, just how he is conveying the story through the cinematography through his characters kind of exploring the environment they are in, the camera lingering a little bit afterwards to capture the emotion, but also passing the time. Is it as cleanly edited as films like, say, Heat or The Insider? I would say not entirely. There are some shots that linger for reasons of which are kind of inexplicable. There are some moments where they hold on people that you kind of feel like maybe you could have cut a little early, but there are some great performances that make use of that particularly Adam Driver, as well as Penelope Cruz. She is phenomenal in this movie. She is one of the main reasons why you should watch it, aside from the subject matter. Her relationship with Ferrari as his wife, the mother of his child who died from sickness, and now has to see Enzo slowly take more and more control of the company from her, as she's been his partner for quite a while, as well as succumb to the fact that he has a bastard child with his mistress and that child could eventually take on the Ferrari name and she's dealing with the guilt, the emotion, and the anger that she has towards her husband. Very interesting relationship. The relationship between her and Enzo is one of the best parts of the movie and it constantly keeps coming back to it and some people might be a little bit taken aback by that considering it kind of cuts back and forth between this race, this very dangerous thousand mile race through Italy that Ferrari needs to win to help boost the company's numbers and their profits and basically just stay alive without being taken over by another entity. And that was something that Ferrari was very, very stubborn about. He did not want to be owned by anyone. That was the point of Ferrari. And he has all of these people that are vying up from Fiat, Ford, and he's just like, no, I want to have control. And that personality, that stubbornness, that thought mentality definitely is given on the screen by Adam Driver, whether it's from him talking with these other businessmen or how he <laughs> goads his own drivers to essentially say, if you have the moment and you slip, you don't belong in Ferrari. You have to take that chance. Every day, you could die on the track, so you might as well go for it. And that's something that this film does not shy away from. It does not shy away from the cost of, and the danger of racing back then. I don't know as much about Enzo Ferrari as I would like to, but this film has made me interested in learning more about him, either reading or listening to the book that it's based on. That leads me to my next note is I cannot confirm the historical authenticity of this movie because Michael Mann did a pretty good based on a true story with the insider and he was pretty close if for a little bit of Hollywood, you know, dramatization. However, Public Enemies, as decent as that movie is, is riddled with historical inaccuracies. There's a person, a very well-known crime boss who dies in that movie well before he actually died. It kind of left me with a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, considering Michael Mann had said in interviews past that this movie was going to be one of the most realistic movies about John Dillinger, and clearly that wasn't true. So I can't say about that for Ferrari, but as a movie, I liked it as a one watch. It's not one of Mann's best. It definitely had those feelings of his previous works. It definitely had some great performances in it. I did like the 
parallel storytelling that happened in it, but it's not a rewatchable movie. I, I don't think so. After James Mangold made Ford vs. Ferrari, I, I was wondering if we'd ever see another movie using old race cars. And while Ferrari doesn't fully go that distance, because again, it's not the main, main focus of the movie, it still did those car scenes pretty good. I liked them. I thought that they were intense. I was very invested in them. You're not as invested in the drivers as much because you don't really know as much about them as you would like. You do get some personal moments with them. There especially there was a scene where all the drivers are writing love notes to their wives or their partners in case they die because this was a reality back then and technically speaking it is a reality even still to this day but i would have liked to have just a little bit more from them i would have liked to have just a little bit more kind of connection with the racers there's certain scenes where the actions around it are more than what is happening to the said characters overall i feel ferrari was a nice return for Michael Mann, it's definitely a positive at the very least. It's not as grandiose as you would have thought it would be. You kind of feel like you want a little bit more from it. I'm just happy that we got a good Michael Mann movie again. And now that he's been talking about making Heat 2 for the little while, I don't know how he would do it. The book was really good. In the end though, I'm gonna give Ferrari a four out of seven. Happy that Michael Mann finally made it a decent movie again. I'm, I'm just happy for that. But that's it for me, guys. I'm curious what you guys thought about this movie. Let me know in the comments below. What are your favorite Michael Mann movies? As I said, this guy was my favorite director in the 90s and even into the mid-2000s. But eventually, Danny Boyle took that spot because Mann wasn't making anything. So, anyways, guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.